Hi, I'm Ricky Sherwood. And I'm Dave Adams. And you're watching The Core Mechanic. Today we're going to be looking at number five on Mike's list, how to host a murder. So, how to host a murder. First one came out in 1985. I wasn't even born then. <laughs> I was four years old. Yeah, and it actually had 16 editions. Yeah, um, we, I mean, we did the uh, How to Host a Mystery because they they split off at some point in the day. That's did, right. Yeah. They did How to Host a Mystery and How to Host a Murder. Uh, I've actually done both now. There's a few, I suppose, design elements we should at least address. Yeah. I mean, is it really a hindrance that the games require eight people? It's not one to eight people, it's not four to eight, it's eight, eight people. And we actually struggled to get that together. The thing is though, it's not a constant ongoing thing like a legacy game would be or a D&D &D session would be. Well, that's true. Uh, it's just a one night thing and you might want to save it for a special event. But I can see back in the 80s, especially when they're coming out, that this was a, that dinner parties were still a real yeah. thing. Yeah, that's... That's sort of, aside from live action role-playing, LARPs, this is the only game I've ever heard of that goes to such lengths. You're yeah. encouraged to dress up in, you, are. you know, the thing. It's meant to be a dinner party. You're meant to have food out for people. The instruction book lays all the stuff this out. This is true. Yeah, it's such a social, such a social thing. I wonder about in terms of its development. 1985 is really quite late in terms of some of these game elements. Mm. And you mentioned LARPs, but LARPing, whether it was called LARPing or not, was happening in various forms on oh, campus yep, yep. universities, almost as a result of D&D. But this was far more constructed. It's almost like you're a character in someone else's story, story. Yep. and you've got some agency, yep. but also some restraints. This is definitely a little bit more, yeah, it is story driven. It requires you to be able to get into a character's headspace for a start. Yeah. I think that the investment is in the story. Um, and we should probably talk about the story because the story was amazing. It is. It was how to it's host a thing. mystery, Star Trek, the next, next generation. generation. No, oh. no. It was no good. one got to be Picard. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. Hopefully. I got Riker, however. So you got Riker. I, got Riker. I was Worf. Yep. That was fun. But this, the... The community constructed story element, I think, is interesting. Uh, you've got certain information you must give out each round. So, as a character in Wolf, I have to I have to get out certain information. That's part of my job. And if I don't do that, then I'm actually letting the group down. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. There's information. That there's another level of information that I'm trying to keep to myself. Yeah, and but the, the restriction is I can't lie yeah, about it, yeah. but I'm trying to obfuscate like hell. <laughs> so, so I'm going out of my way to try and avoid saying certain things. Uh, but at the same time, I also have to get this information out without allowing people to catch on and inquire get about suspicious. things. And get yeah. suspicious that, that leads which, to them asking the questions I don't want to answer. Which is very difficult because everyone is suspicious of everyone. Everyone's suspicious so of everyone. So they're looking for little things. Absolutely. The best part is, I think, is that uh, you're going through the whole mystery. Yes. And you don't even know if you're the guy, person that did it. That's right. So you, you yourself could be the traitor or the murderer or whatever, but you're trying to work out if it's you or someone, someone else. else. Maybe you are just a unfortunate, you know, bystander who accidentally did something bad, but not the real bad thing. Well, not the really bad thing. That's what I love is that everybody's culpable for something wrong. Everyone's That's doing the wrong thing. Wrong. The thing that I'm thinking about is how to host a mystery versus any other deduction game. Why would you do how to host a murder slash mystery over playing Mafia. Mafia, you've got, it, it's quick, it's simple. You, you play it out in about 30 minutes. Yep. Well, you know, for a long session. The, the fact that this takes three hours. Yeah, it is a social event. It is a social constructed, event. Constructed, it's the only thing you'll be doing all night. Yeah. So you've got to make the most out of it. I think it's fascinating that I, I would almost think it would, it would be asking too much of people to come over and engage on this level with the story. Because like, I always find drama of any kind to be confronting because you're portraying something and it can be a little, make you a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. Somehow these games kept drawing people back time and time again. 
Yeah. And for years. Because there's now an element of social acceptability with the drama that you're putting forward because you are playing part of the game. It is part of the game. Yeah. It's a excuse of sorts. Yeah, the biggest challenge to this game was What's that? Finding, finding a cassette, tape recorder. Finding a cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> I think for ages I was like, we can't play this game because I don't oh have a cassette God, player. A cassette. It's all oh, on a cassette. That's great. So that's what I like about this at the end of the day and possibly even why it deserves its place on the list is that there are a lot of D&D manuals, there's a lot of role-playing styles and, yep. and different systems out there, but this is one that is, it's really structured and well-guided. Yep. Uh, and it provides you with a lot, but gives enough to you as the player to play with and manipulate. So you you can still be engaged and creating your own, bringing your own themes and style and personality to it. But you still have a structured story already there. Yeah. That's one of the things I think why it's such a, a good experience. Yeah, and a good story. And a good story. But look, that's all we've got time for today. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please hit that like button. If you're new to this community, please hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'm Dave Adams. I'm Ricky Sherwood. And you'll be watching The Core Mechanic.